Last time, what questions did we study? Tell me the questions and answers. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum Sir, the first question is what will happen to the jewelry if you don't give zakat for it or pay zakat for it? So the answer will be jewelry will turn into fire and they will wear it on the day of resurrection or on the day of Qiyamah. Okay. And the second question, does a farmer need to pay any zakat on his produce? The answer is no, according to Hadith 638. But the farmers needs to pay the usher. Usher is 10% for irrigated land. Okay. And was there any other question? So one another was, it was not a question. You just said that uh, for a new Muslim, if he embraces Islam, then uh, teaching should be step by step. Yes. He should not be with anything at once. Yes, we deal with them step by step. Okay, today we will study this book, inshallah. The name of the book is Sunan Nisai. And we will start from this one. Okay, read this one. It was new, new students, you need a pen <clears throat> and a notebook because in the next class, I will ask the questions and answers from these and these. Okay, read this one. Sir, I should, okay. Sir, uh, I should read the heading or start from 3198? Okay, read the heading as well. Okay. Sir, um, command of the Messenger of Allah uh, وسلم, peace be upon him first concerning marriage his wife and what Allah the mighty and sublime permitted to his prophet when it is forbidden to other people because of his virtue and high status it was narrated that Atta said we attended the funeral of Maimuna the wife of the prophet peace be upon him with Ibn Abbas in Sari Ibn Abbas said this is Maimuna. When you lift up her beer, do not rock it nor shake it. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, had nine wives and he used to give a share of his time to eight of them and not to one. Okay, so this uh, wife of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to give one day or one night to every wife. But uh, this uh, wife was too old for marriage life, so she gave her turn to Aisha. So she gave Prophet ﷺ permission to use her day uh, in the house of Aisha, not with her, <clears throat> because of this age, her age. So we don't have any question from this one. If anybody has any question, they can ask me. But we don't need to write anything from this one. <coughs> next student. Who is next? Miss Sara. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Read this one. It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said when the Messenger of Allah, the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, died, he had nine wives. He used to uh, intimate with all, with all of them except one who had given her day and the night to uh, Aisha. So just like the previous hadith, Prophet وسلم, used to give one day and one night to every each of his wife but 
uh, this wife whose name was Memuna, she was too old, so she gave her turn to Aisha. So this and this also tells us that a woman can leave some of her rights on her husband. <clears throat> Next student, Inam Nadvi. Anas narrated, Anas narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to go around to his wives in a single night, and at that time he had nine wives. So this is another special uh, miracle of <coughs> Prophet وسلم, that a normal man can't do this thing, but he has ability of that he used to go to all his wives in one night. Next student, iPhone. Sabina Haq. Yes, sir. Read it was one. narrated that I, Aisha said, I used to feel jealous of those women who offered themselves in marriage to the Prophet to see upon him. And I said, would a free woman offer herself? Then Allah, the mighty and sublime revealed, you can postpone whom you will of them and you may receive whom you will. I said by Allah, I see that your Lord is quick to respond to your wishes. So this is another special thing about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that normally or normal men can have only four wives. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was allowed by Allah Almighty to have more than four wives as well. So this thing is also related to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam only. So we don't need to write any question here. Next student, Sara. Yes. Really? Yes. It was related that uh, Shah uh, Zati. Shah Ibn no. Yes. Sahl. Sahl ibn, Sahl ibn Sa'd said it uh, I was among the people when a woman said I offer myself in marriage to you. O oh, messenger of Allah, see what you what you think of me. A man stood up and said marry me to her. He said go and find something even if it is an iron ring. So he went, but he couldn't find anything, not even an iron ring. So the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do you have memorized any surahs of the Quran? He said, yes, so he married him to hear in the basis of what he know of surahs of the Quran. So first so, thing here is this, the woman can also send up marriage proposal to anyone there is no restriction that a man only can send proposal women can also <clears throat> send the marriage proposal so you if you want to write this question then you can write it can a woman send a marriage proposal the answer is yes according to the these 3202 it is permissible nothing to worry about <clears throat> second thing question Normally, a man cannot look at another woman, but when he is thinking about marriage, he can think, uh, he can look at that specific lady. So, these are the two points that you need to, you better write these two points for uh, this number 3202. First point Can a woman send a marriage proposal? The answer is yes. Second thing, a man cannot look at other women, but can he look at that specific lady with whom he is thinking about marriage? The answer is yes, he can look at that specific 
lady. Inam Nadvi, tell me the two points from Hadith number 3202. Wait, uh, I'm on the way. Miss Amina, did you write? Yeah, teacher. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. Okay, tell me these two things. So, a woman can send a proposal to marry a man. Okay. And what is the second thing? And the man cannot look at the woman, but he can look the lady he wants to marry, like if he has the intention to marry her. He okay. can look at her. Okay. Now write one more thing here for this and this. <clears throat> can a man give knowledge to woman as Hak Meher or Mahar? The answer is yes. So next thing you write from this and this. Can a man give knowledge to the woman as her mahar? The answer is yes. Miss Amina, what is the third point? Can a man give knowledge to the woman as, Sir, can you repeat this? as her mahar? Hakmahar. Okay. The okay. answer is yes. So I'm gonna tell me this point. Is teacher a man can give can teach like some surah for the meher like teaching our knowledge. knowledge. You can just know uh, knowledge. Yes. Yeah, knowledge and teaching our knowledge as same meher. So meher and dari the same. Sorry. Dari and Meher. So what is the definition of Dari according to you? It where it is different in among different cultures. Okay. That according is, uh... to me. Yes, so what is in your culture? One student at a time. Yes, Amina. Yes, teacher. It's like when a man wants to marry a lady, the things he give he gives are like he have to give us something specific, like maybe churis, maybe money, something like that. So that's called meher in yes. my country. Okay, good. So that is the definition in Islam as well. So at the time of marriage, a woman uh, asks for something or from something her else. husband. Mm -hmm. That thing is mahar. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mahar. at the time of marriage, the wife asks something from husband. That thing is known as mahar. It can be anything. It can be wealth, jewelry, money, knowledge, residence, or any material. She can ask anything, whatever she wants. Okay, now Miss Amina, read this one. Okay, teacher. Bismillah. Chapter 2. What Allah joined upon his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and forbid to other people in order to bring him closer to him. It was narrated from Aisha, the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to her when Allah commanded him to give his wife the choice. Aisha said, the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started with me and said, I'm going to tell you something, but you do not have to rush until you consult your parents. She said, he knew that my parents would not tell me to leave him. Then the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Oh, Prophet, say to your, no, sorry, Allah, Messenger of Allah, yeah, Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Oh, Prophet, say to your wife, 
if you desire the life of this world and its pleasure, then come. I will make a profession. No, what is that? A profession. No. Yes. For you and set you free in handsome manner. I say, do I need to consult my parents about this? I choose Allah and this messenger and she obeyed, she obeyed off hereafter. So we know that Prophet ﷺ used to give everything in charity and often they used to sleep hungry. They don't have any food to eat. So some wives started to ask Prophet ﷺ to give them more of these worldly things. At that time, Allah commanded Prophet ﷺ to give them joy. If they want this worldly life, they will be given this worldly life but they will have to leave the Prophet So this is about that thing. Then those wives choose the life of next, uh, next choose the next life and they did not leave Prophet Then Allah Ta'ala said in it was narrated that Aisha, uh, Aisha may, may Allah be pleased with her, said the messenger of Allah, Allah uh, peace be upon him, gave his wife the choice of saying with him, was it divorce? So some uh, people think that when know? husband gives a choice to wife, it is considered as divorce, but it is not. So if the husband think that woman is not satisfied with her income, with his income or other stuff, he can give her this choice either to stay with him or either take divorce and start a new life. But that was, of course, not a divorce. Read the next one as well. Some advocate uh, that if a husband Read the in this situation watch okay. out. It was narrated that Aisha said, the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, gave us the choice and we chose him. So uh, there was no divorce. So in that case, the wives did not choose divorce. They decided to stay with Prophet And then they also stopped asking him to give him, to give them more of these worldly things. Miss Sarah. Read the next one. Some some advocate. It was narrated that. Uh, it was narrated that uh, Ata say, said uh, Aisha said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't die until woman had been made. Lawful to him. So normal man can only have four wives, but Allah gave him this choice to choose as many as wives he wants. Yes. Read the next one as well. Um. In. Uh, it was narrated that Aisha. Or after uh, chapter three, thirty two zero seven. This one. Hmm. It was narrated that Aisha said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't die until Allah permitted him to marry whatever woman he wanted. Hmm. So a normal man can marry only four women, but Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was given permission to marry as many as he wants or anyone he wants. Hmm. Mr. Inam. Yes, sir. It was narrated that Al Qama said, I was with Ibn Masood while he was with Usama, Usman. May Allah be pleased with him. And Usman said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, came out to some fitya, that means young man. Abu Abdul Rahman said, I didn't understand the word fitya. As I would want and said, 
whoever among you can afford it, let him get married, for it's more effective in lowering the case and guarding chastity, chastity, and uh, whoever cannot, then fasting will. Be a restraint, visa yes. for him. Then yes, be a restraint, visa. <clears throat> So here you all better write this question. What shall a Muslim do after reaching or after attaining the age of puberty question is what shall a muslim do after attaining the age of puberty the answer is a Muslim should do nikah to fulfill his or her needs in a halal way and to avoid haram things if he or she cannot do nikah then they should fast the answer is a Muslim should do nikah. Why? Haram. If she, she can't do nikah, then they should fast. Wa alaikum as salam. So, who is the next one? Amina. Tell me the question and answer. Yes, teacher. The question is, what should a Muslim do after attaining the age of puberty? The answer is, a Muslim should do nikah to fulfill his or her need in a halal way and to avoid haram. If they cannot, they should fast. If any student has any question, they can ask me. So what does vija mean? This vija restraint vija. You can consider it a restraint, like something which helps you to restrain yourself, control yourself. Okay. Miss Amina, read the next one. Yeah. It was narrated from Muhammad that Uthman said to Ibn Masud, Shall I arrange for you to marry a young girl, Abdullah, called Hanna? And he told the people that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Them get married for it is more effective in lowering the gaze and the guiding chastity. Just testy. We don't know. And whoever cannot afford it, then let him fast, for it is will be strength for him. So same thing is repeated here. If we want to avoid haram things, then we better do nikah as soon as possible. You can delay the marriage. 
once you have job but you better not delay the nikah usually people get the job at the age of 25 years but you can do, you can delay the marriage until that but you can do nikah much earlier nikah is still easy next student sabina I will read the Hadith or comment. Yes. Then he should fast, but it will be a restraint, Vija for him. Abu Abdul Rahman said, the mention of Al Aswad in this Hadith is not preserved. So what does this mean? Same thing is repeated. Same question and same answer is repeated in the entireties. Okay. Now, if any student has any question, they can ask me. Then we will stop the class. No question. So, we'll see you all next time, inshallah. Do you hear me? Teacher. Do you hear Teacher. me? Teacher. Yes. Uh, can we uh, tell us the book before uh, before Halaka? Uh, the name of the book and the number for it before Halaka to uh, prepare it Nisai. before Halaka. Sulam Nisai, Hadith hmm. number 32, 13. Yeah, so um, um, Tirmizi, Ahmed, Ibn Hanbal, all this book, we don't uh, study from it? We, from we study eight books. Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Sunan Abid Dawud, Jamai Tirmizi, Sunan Ibn Maja, then Masnan Imam Ahmad, Mishkat al Musabi. We study eight of these books. Today we studied Sunan Nisai. Okay. Anyone else? See you all next time.